Hi, Melanie Minchinger here. Today I'm going to be sharing a project with you that I made for my new book, Fabulous Stamp Frames from Annie's Paper Crafts. This is a technique workbook featuring 36 projects that I created using a series of frame stamp sets for Gina K Designs, each one including a large frame that will fill an A2 size card front. This makes mass production very simple and it also creates a balanced layout every time. In addition, all of the stamp sets include coordinating images and sentiments along with spaces that take all the guesswork out of where your greetings go. Today I'm going to be using the Inspiration Mosaic set. You do not need to have all the different stamp sets in this book to recreate these cards or use these techniques, but this is one of my favorites and one that I believe is the most versatile in the series. They're die cut stamps, they're very easy to line up on the block, and the project that I'm going to be doing today is from the chapter on sponge scenes. And using ink pads and sponge daubers is such a popular way to create an outdoor scene. So I'm going to be making this nighttime scene. And instead of stamping the frame first, the way that I did here, I'm going to show you how quickly you can build this scene up with your sponges and then how much adding this frame is really going to enhance your design at the end. The other products that you're going to need are a large block and you just need to take one side of your frame, line it up with one line on the block, and that makes it very easy for lining it up when you stamp. You'll need some white cardstock. I like to use the Gina K Pure Luxury. It has a very smooth finish, which is good for blending the inks when you're sponging. You'll need some ink pads. I'm using the Gina K Designs Black Onyx, Memento Danube Blue, and Lulu Lavender. I have different sponge daubers for each of my pads. I have a small block that I use for the sentiments and the images, but we're just using one sentiment today with the frame. I have a Sakura gel pen for adding some stars after I do my inking, sponging. And then I have a Nestabilities die that I cut out the circle with. This is going to act as a mask so that I can make the moon and its reflection. You can cut up a lot of these in different sizes so you have them ready to go when you're going to make an outdoor scene. And finally, you're going to need just some regular old scratch paper. You need a smooth edge for the horizon, and you just need to tear an edge that's going to make the hills. So to begin, I'm going to start with my lightest color. I always start with the lightest one first. And I'm going to ink up that dauber. And just start sponging around the edge of this moon. You want to keep the stamp moving so that you're not getting a big round impression of a stamp, of the sponge, excuse me. And I try to leave some white space so it looks a little bit more atmospheric and like there are clouds drifting through. Okay. And then I'm going to move it down directly below to create a reflection. And I always make the bottom a little bit lighter, wouldn't be as vivid as the real scene on top. Okay, next I'm going to add the blue, concentrating on the corners. I'm going to cover that up again. So you want to start off the edges, since you don't know how much ink you picked up that time so it doesn't get too dark. Okay, and then we're going to shift to the bottom. This middle area is going to get covered up by those hills, like I said. And if it gets too dark in one area, then you can just go back. Until you feel like it looks balanced and even. Okay. And we're going to add the hills. So for this, you're just going to put 
your straight edge in the middle and you want to have it parallel to that top line and then you're going to put the jagged edge above it and then instead of going in circles because I don't want to go up under that edge I'm just going to kind of pounce this on And remove pretty and then you might want to shift it to make a second layer and do this one a little bit lighter and it's going to look like hills in the distance okay and then you're just going to flip it and repeat the same thing on the bottom When you turn that over, it's going to make a mirror image of those hills you just did. And I always do the bottom a little lighter. Okay. And then shift it a little bit so that you can do second little layer of hills there. Okay, and that's it. Now, I like it like that, but adding the little stars, we're just going to make it come to life. Make some a little bit bigger than the others. Place some of them closer together and some far apart. You don't want them so evenly spaced that it looks like a pattern. Just want it to look like a sprinkling of stars in the Milky Way. And then you can add some little ripples on the water. Just some wavy lines. And then you might want to go back and add just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue, a little bit of haze over that moon without the mask on it. All right, now we're ready to add our frame and our greeting. So you always want to ink it face up, just a few taps. You can see how well loved this stamp is. It's one that I've used more than any in my collection, I'm sure. And then just tilt it to the light so you can make sure that all the edges are wet and inked. And you're just going to flip it over and you'll be able to see all four sides of those mat of the mat, excuse me, around the stamp and then just carefully lower, press and pull it away. Not pretty. And I put the moon where I did because I knew I was going to add my greeting here at the top in this top box. Always shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you land in the stars. I just think that makes a perfect masculine card. You see, we didn't use any embellishments, very few products. It's only two layers, but when you put it onto just a black base, that makes a really great looking card. Very simple. And if you want to do a landscape, longer layout, you would just turn it this way, and then your greeting can go here or turn this way. Now you can use the same technique of sponging to suggest a scene a little bit more loosely but with a different one of my sets. Here I used it with the A Beautiful Life set which has some line art images in it for you to color. I also cut this out with a silhouette cut file that coordinates with this stamp set. And what I did here is I just sponged some orange and yellow at the top to suggest clouds, some green at the bottom to suggest grass, and then just colored right onto my images. You see also this double border that it has with the oval and the rectangle. You fill that in with your markers and it looks like a lot more layers than it actually is. So I love that illusion. You're saving paper, you're saving adhesive. It's not as heavy when you're mailing and it just goes very quickly. You've got a different color paper basically for any mark that you fill that in with. I think you're going to love the different projects that I have in this book. The stamp sets are all so different. There's really some, something for everyone. Again, you do not have to have every single stamp set in this book. 
to recreate these projects or to do these techniques, but I think that you're really going to love them and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you will make in the Gina K Design Stamp TV Gallery. Thanks so much for watching.